Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory, O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord, Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, fountain of all wisdom, you know that our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people of Israel, the Lord your God will make you abundantly prosperous. Was this something different? Just read this. Oh. Just read this. All right, thanks. The, we, a reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground, he said. My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves. And after that, you may pass on, since you have come to your servant. So they said, do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, make ready quickly three measures of flour, knead it, and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it out before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, where is your wife Sarah? And he said, there in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife Sarah shall have a son. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Is this one different too? 
The psalm for today is Psalm 15. Let us read it alternately, breaking at the asterisk. Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle? Who may abide upon your holy hill? Whoever leads a blameless life and does what is right. Who speaks the truth from his heart. There is no guile upon his tongue. He does no evil to his friend. He does not heap contempt upon his neighbor. In his sight, the wicked is rejected. But he honors those who fear the Lord. He has sworn to do no wrong. And does not take back his word. He does not give his money in hope of gain. Nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things shall never be overthrown. Is this one different? A reading from the letter to, of Paul to the Colossians. Christ Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross, and you, who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his fleshly body through death, so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him, provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith without shifting from the hope of promise by the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. I, Paul, became a servant of this gospel. I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church. I became its servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known, the mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations but has now been revealed to his saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory 
As Jesus and his disciples went on their way, Jesus entered a village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks, so she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the one who gives us the better part. Amen. Well, I have another Holy Spirit story for you today. At least I hope it's a Holy Spirit story. I think from a human perspective, we can never be on our own as individuals 100% sure. Now, we always have to be careful about assuming we know where the Holy Spirit is and isn't. But I'll tell you, um, I'll tell you what happened. Back when uh, Joyce Tompkins retired, soon after she retired, we were gearing up for a search process. And um, as that was happening, uh, and as after we had broadcast our, uh, our uh, position, I was contacted by a person, um, a priest, a pre actually a person about to be ordained as priest, uh, who was going to be looking for a position. And she wanted to get together, talk with me. So we went down to the inn. And I think we sat for hour and a half, two hours, we really got to know each other. And I thought, wow, this is a, this is a great person. This is really would like to think about having her come and join us. But, you know, she probably wanted, or she at least was interested in a full-time position and she was going to be, she had a couple of other irons in the fire. And so I asked her just, you know, let's talk again, get back to me when you, you know, as things go. Next I heard from her, she was being announced as the new associate uh, at another church. Ah, <laughs> ouch. Now, you know, in the business world, I'm sure that kind of thing happens all the time, right? Uh, people don't always remember to loop back, especially if you put out 30 resumes and have 30 little intro interviews, you know, you don't, you don't circle back and say, well, I found something else, it's not, not like that. But in the church world, we hope for, I think, a bit more uh, uh, relational connection, uh, and especially with a new colleague and with someone whom I felt I had connected so much with, uh, I, I, I felt the lack. And I noticed as the months progressed that every time I saw her on the Zoom screen, I had a little bit of a twang, and it wasn't going away which bothered me. So finally, this last spring, I went to her at the clergy conference and I asked her if we could walk and talk. And I said to her that I had a confession, that I hadn't been able to let go of this thing, that I had thought we left it that she was going to get back to me and it, and it, and it, hurt, it hurt that this is what happened. And I confessed, I mean, I felt like it was my lack that I had not been able to let go of such a small thing. And I said, I don't always close the loop either. I mean, I, I have phone calls that are pending. I, I do this. And yet I felt like I needed to say this to you because that's the scriptural teaching. If you feel like someone has sinned against you, go to them and in a humble spirit, 
Bring that to them. And as I said this to her, she immediately said, oh my goodness, Ted, I am so sorry. I feel, I feel, and immediately we were like that again. That's part one of the story. For the past uh, couple of months, for some reason, a couple of, few weeks anyway, several weeks, I had been feeling like I needed to follow up again and thank her and really tell her how much now I felt uh, just joyful in the fact that she's a colleague and that we had, had repaired whatever little breach there had been. And I thought, oh, I need to write her a note, I need to write her a note, I need to write her a note. I hadn't done it, I have, you know, in the to-do list. So finally, two, three days ago, I wrote her an email and I said, if I were really good, I would be picking up a pen and a notepad and, and a card and writing this to you. But let me at least say this. And I thanked her, talked about how important it was, how meaningful it was, how gratifying it was, how I think it's one of the most gratifying things in life to be able to move to a deeper level of trust with people, especially after this been, and usually through some kind of a little, little glitch, a little conflict. No wonder that I went on and did what I did, right? Uh, with the studies. Well, she wrote me back an email, and I, and I said, and it is, it is so, so it is, uh, so, so, you know, there are many things to worry about in life. How wonderful it is that I can give thanks for this, and I, and I write to you in Thanksgiving. And I look forward to collegial connections, et cetera, et cetera. She wrote back and she said, Dear Ted, sometimes I really do think the Holy Spirit is at work among many people at the same time. For many weeks, I have been, you have been on my mind. And so just the day I received, today, or yesterday, the day I received your email, I had finished writing a note card to you and put it in the mail. And she went on to say thank you and, and looking forward to working together and, and all of that. How special is that? Isn't that lovely? It is, in fact, so easy these days to get caught up in all that's wrong and all that we wish were different. But when we pay attention to what the Spirit is giving us to do right in front of us, when we listen and act on those little nudges, these miraculous things can happen which revive the soul. We have today um, two stories, two powerful stories that speak about following those urges. The first is the story of Abram um, at the Oaks at Mamre. And the second is the story of Martha and Mary. I want to touch on both of those briefly. Just to make sure you know it, because it's an important story and because we chose it as our front cover picture. Uh, the story from Genesis, and thank you, Agnes, and thank you, Ashley, for letting me direct you to that. The story in Genesis is that Abraham, Abraham listened to the Lord. Now that's interesting, because when he goes out, what does he see? He sees three strangers dressed in white, and he is hospitable to them. And in that hospitality, he is actually connecting with God. And this begins the Abraham and Sarah story, right? I will return to you in due season, and your wife Sarah shall have a son. Because he was hospitable to these strangers, he ended up getting this message from God that their deepest desire, a child, would be given to them. Remember, Abraham and Sarah were old. They were beyond childbearing years, and yet this was being given to them. Fast forward to the Martha and Mary story. I know that this story really irks some people. Um, and I understand why, and I get it. You know, for folks who, who 
often end up doing a lot of the necessary tasks of life. Um, the idea that someone gets to just sit and not have to do any of it and listen to the Lord is irksome. I'll just say the word again. It bothers you. I think the point is not that Jesus was saying the tasks were unimportant or that Martha shouldn't come or that the tasks shouldn't even be shared. Listen to what he says to Martha to begin with. He says, Martha, Martha, you are what? You know? Worried and distracted. Worried and distracted. Worried and distracted by many things. I think what this points us to, to understand is that if we do not have a sense of God, a sense of the Spirit, a sense of, a sense of God's love and presence and guidance permeating our lives, then our tasks become mere worries rather than tasks with purpose. What we choose to do to fill that void in our heart are distractions rather than something which truly feeds us. I think he would have Martha do less of the doing and more of the sitting and listening. But he was not going to take away from Mary sitting and listening and feeling the Holy Spirit. We are on Wednesday nights, some of us uh, sitting and uh, learning a bit about how to listen for the Spirit. Uh, those of us who are gathering for this little summer Bible study, it's, it's for people who are newer to reading the Bible and also newer to the church, uh, are, are doing a bit of, of an introduction to the scriptures and of an approach to reading the scriptures, to sitting with the scriptures. And not just reading them, but listening for the Holy Spirit. And here's how we're doing it. We read the scripture once, straight through, and then sit for a few moments, or maybe 30 seconds or so, in silence. And then we read it again with many people around the circle uh, reading a small part. And then the facilitator asks, what one word or short phrase resonates with you, speaks to you? And people answer. And the trick here is not to fill in around for your answer with why or really anything else. Just name the words. Just read the phrase. Read the word. And then we read again one more time. And only after that third reading do we then open up the question, what was it about that passage that meant something to you or you had a question about? Now, it's tempting at that point to jump into a commentary on the entire passage. But again, the question is really about exactly the phrase that resonated for them. And I find that as people do this approach to reading the scriptures, that at least in my body, and I think in theirs as well, the words sink deeper in my mind, but it feels literally like it's sinking in. And that a different kind of listening is happening. Not the kind of listening which is the critical mind using all of that our rational minds have to bring to reading texts, which is important, but a different kind of reading. But kind of a saturation in the word, a sitting with. I've said to this group that I get from the Jewish tradition the idea that God hovers close to the text. And that as we 
put ourselves into the text and listen, we put ourselves closer to God. I don't believe that there is a one-for-one -one correspondence between every word on the page and God's voice. But I do believe that as we immerse ourselves in the scriptures and listen with this kind of compassionate listening, this eagerness to hear the Holy Spirit, that we are putting ourselves closer to the presence of God and that God speaks to us. I say that to you because I want you to know that this is not merely some great mystery, what it means to listen to the Holy Spirit. I mean, I, we can all get better at it. I can get better at it. I want to couple that by saying that there are people who are uh, more inclined that way, and there are people who are more inclined to be doers, and that's fine. That's one reason that we are best as a community. We need one another in that way as well. We need our Bible study leaders, and we need our people who like to work on the gardens. For many people, working on the gardens is the most prayerful thing they can do. Nevertheless, we are both individually and collectively able to go further in listening to the Holy Spirit. And here's the payoff, according to Colossians. Not only, not only do we get to discover ourselves being led day by day, week by week, year by year, by the Spirit, not only do we find ourselves able to enter into relationships and get through wrinkles and even find trust growing because we have humbly spoken to one another in the spirit of the Lord. But we are also able to know that we stand blameless and irreproachable before our God. That's the promise in Colossians. That at the end of the day, we're pure, we're ready, we're good to go. I think all of that is worth making the life of pursuing the Spirit, listening for the Spirit, trying to be guided by the Spirit. Not the only thing we do, but certainly the most important. Amen. Let us stand together and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made known. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. 
He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, yes, friends, friends, and, and neighbors, neighbors. And for, for those, those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for, for justice, justice, freedom, freedom and, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims, victims of, of hunger, hunger, fear, fear injustice, injustice, and, and oppression. oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, the friendless and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the, the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. We pray today in our sister diocese of Guatemala for Mission Oakland, in this diocese of Pennsylvania for our Bishop Daniel, the Brandywine Deanery, and their Dean Richard, in this parish for Jack Beck and Jake Millet, high school graduates being honored today, and for needs and concerns we name now aloud or in the quiet of our hearts. Hear us, O Lord, for your, for your mercy, mercy is great. great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, for the gift of summer days, for those celebrating birthdays this week, Lance Donaldson Evans, Noah Millett, Katie Orlando, Dave Perillo, Darter Sturgis, and Jacob Sturgis, and other blessings we name now. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your, your name, name forever and ever. ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them, who put, put their, their trust, trust in, in you. you. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Beloved in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's share a sign of peace. Please be comfortable. A couple of announcements about upcoming events. Uh, First of all, we are having the picnic, which is nicely rounding into shape with uh, various plans. Uh, the picnic is this Tuesday, kind of snuck up on me. Uh, it's July 19th, this Tuesday at 6 p.m. Uh, we are asking for a donation for the meat 
uh, and the other things being provided. If you can come and bring a side dish to share, that would be fantastic. But in any case, just come. Uh, we are delighted that we already have, I think, 40 people signed up, which is fantastic. I'm now calling it the Midsummer Night's Eve uh, Trinity Picnic or something like that. So come and enjoy, just for fun. Um, we are, we'll have one more Sunday and then I am going away. So I'm here through next Sunday and then the Thompsons are going on their summer break. Uh, so then beginning uh, July 31st, you'll have uh, a, a priest coming in. I'll say more about that next week. Uh, there's gonna be one Sunday, the first Sunday in July, in, in August, where we will need to do morning prayer. Couldn't quite find a supply person for that. They're in short supply uh, these days. Um, so uh, that'll be nice, actually, because remember, we, we re-engaged with the morning prayer tradition during COVID, so it's uh, actually nice to keep it alive. Lots of plans are afoot, good things for the fall. Uh, I'm going to be sending out a survey to the parish uh, next week uh, to help me make final decisions about how to orchestrate Sunday mornings in the, in the fall. I am committed to our returning to a three-service or three event Sunday. Well, I say three event because I'm not sure that the 915 will always be a Eucharist. It might be songs, activities, other things for, the, for families with kids, little kids. But in any case, we'll have three things, like in the old days, a 915 and 11 o'clock service. So please do look for the survey. Um, I need input to know how to maneuver various other components of, of what we're hoping to do on Sundays, particularly around uh, formation events, study, fellowship, and so forth. All right? So please look forward to that. And let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself, an offering and sacrifice to God. All things come from thee, O oh Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, who by water and the Holy Spirit hast made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth thy glory in all the world. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, 
heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee. The memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. We earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God.
finding the words for the prayer after communion. Together, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Amen.